Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Urverk UR105M Iron Knight. Titanium, black PVD, and brushed stainless steel. This one of 77 Urverk can be seen and purchased on our website, watchyouwant.com. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now, the one thing I can say about Urverk is that they have an identity that is original, distinctive, and unforgettable. When they first bowed in 1997, their idea was alternative portrayal of time. Since then, they've become an anchor of the independent horology movement. Urverk, respectively, Martin Fry, the designer, and Felix Baumgartner, the engineer and watchmaker, have pioneered a look that took high horology away from traditional forms of the Patek Philippe Calatrava dress watches and the Rolex Submariner style sports watches and showed that traditional mechanical watchmaking could take almost any form, sort of like what Vianney Halter and Jeff Barnes were doing. It kind of divorced mechanical watches from the imagery of the past. Your watch could look like a spaceship on the wrist, and indeed, that's what this UR105 looks like. But what it feels like is completely different. Now, 53 millimeters is the length between extremities. So from the tip to the opposing tip, 53. Here's the distinction. The watch has what I can only describe as negative lug span, which is to say that the hinged mounting points of the lugs are actually, actually underneath an inset from the edges of the case. So the watch actually wears really small for its size. You can see it's immense in profile, 40 millimeters wide, 16 and a half millimeters thick, 53 lug to lug. This is something like a Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller in absolute surface area, but mostly titanium with aluminum elements as well, and a textile and calfskin strap. It's incredibly light, and because of the flexibility of the underslung lugs, it wears relatively small. I mean, a small wrist can accommodate this watch with ease. You can see 16 centimeters in circumference. My wrist still has the strap flaring outward, not tucking inward as it moves away from the lugs. So even if your wrist is very small, you're going to be able to wear this one comfortably. And again, mass is not a problem because it's mostly titanium. But just to give you a perspective on the size, it's not an overwhelming monstrosity. It has good presence, but right next to a classically proportioned 41 and a half millimeter round watch, my JLC Grand Memovox, you can see that the proportions are essentially the same. From lug to lug, side to side, they read very close. This is not in your Hublot King Power. This is not in your Royal Oak Offshore 44 millimeter size range. It's a very manageable, deft balance of size and stunning appearance. But the key here is the alternative display of time. This is what Urverk is known for. And long before they adopted the spaceship motif in their styling, it was the digital time display and the rotating time wheels that defined them. Now you can see the oncoming hour appears right next to my thumb, and just as the outgoing hour, 5 o'clock in this case, departs the minute scale, the incoming hour lines up with the minute scale. 0 to 60 minutes slung across the bottom of what I can only describe as the dial, you can see that that hour then holds itself fixed as it lines up with the minutes, 15, 20, 25, and now half past the hour. Now I pull the crown, it does hack the balance, more on that in a moment. But it's quite easy to read, the legibility is excellent, and these four individual hour discs make one complete circuit of the dial every four hours. Each disc, partially hidden here, features four separate numerals, and in an innovation unique to Urverk, scrolling seconds, constant seconds, on a barrel indicator. You may recognize this time display from a series of Audemars Piguet star wheel watches from the 1990s and early 2000s. The key distinction here, and remember, the wandering hours clock pioneered this centuries before either Urverk or Audemars Piguet, but the key distinction between the star wheel from AP and the Urverk series of digital displays is that Urverk uses a much more precise and robust Maltese cross changeover system to circulate the hour disks, whereas AP uses a system of star wheels that are propelled by springs. That's a finer, more traditional system, but this one is more suited to a sports watch, and it features this constant seconds display, something AP has yet to adopt. So you can, again, hack the balance by pulling the crown, stop the seconds, and synchronize precisely to a reference timer. There is a power reserve gauge on the flank, 
but it's not quite as legible from this angle on the iPhone. That's much better. On the case back, Erverk has another set of tricks up its sleeves. Starting with the power reserve gauge for the 42 hours of autonomy, a traditional needle gauge, it lets you know when you're running low on the manual wind caliber 5.01 movement. There's also a unique oil change interval indicator. Now it starts right there, and the watch is new, so it's going to make its circuit around this dial through sectors 1, 2, 3, 4, before finally returning to the index, and that's your signal to send the watch back to Felix Baumgartner in Switzerland. And down here, something you're unlikely to see anywhere else. If the oil change, basically service interval, isn't original enough, then the fine adjustment mechanism on the outside of the watch, do-it-yourself style, is definitely an Erverk original. This allows you to adjust the rate of the balance, actually change the timing of the watch over a small span of seconds. Using this gauge and this key, you can actually time your watch, see if it's running two or three seconds fast, two or three seconds slow, and then make subtle changes to the rate of the watch at home. You've heard me talk about free-sprung balances, swan's neck regulators, triovis, mobile studs, and variable inertia balance blocks in the past. But what those all have in common is that they're regulating mechanisms and they're inside the watch, accessible only to the watchmaker. Erverk uniquely has put the owner in charge of fine regulation. And I've got to say, that's bold. Not many independent or major brands would like to have their customers actually manipulating the movement itself, crown and pushers aside. This is not just original, it's bold. Now, as one of only 77, you're unlikely to see another one of these, but rest assured, Erverk builds less than 1,000 watches total each year. So these are exclusive watches, and while the look is individualistic, even within that pool of watches annually, there are micro additions. So this Iron Knight is completely different than its Black Knight counterpart, completely different than the almost acid day glow colors of the 105 TAs and the like. So each Erverk model is about as close as you can get to owning a piece unique as you'll find essentially anywhere but a piece unique. What you get here is a watch that's completely realized in-house. The movement is their own. That's quite an accomplishment for a company that builds fewer than a thousand watches a year. But the Caliber 5.01 has a 42-hour power reserve 32 joules, a unique combination of traditional brass and rhodium plated elements with titanium, space age polymer, and aluminum components for that element of the avant garde in a technical sense. Water resistant to 3 ATM, it is a sports watch, but it's a sports watch for good times high and dry. I'm going to add that perhaps somewhat whimsically, uh, Martin Fry says that this watch is inspired by the imagery of medieval armor. Let that sink in for a minute. I don't know if that's intentional irony, but the only medieval knight I can imagine wearing a watch like this would have to be a member of the Borg Collective to qualify. This is a fantastic, original, and historically important company. Their interpretation on high horology, their effect on independent watchmaking, just think of all the unconventional time displays that we've seen explode into the market over the last 15 years. All the different ways of displaying time digitally, on sliding scales, on fluid scales, and everything in between. All of that can trace its roots to Erverk. They've not just been pioneers, but they've consistently been among the best at what they do. Innovating, showing the way forward, and divorcing us from our preconceptions of what a luxury watch could be or should be. Still among the best in the business, always desirable, always exclusive. You can see this Erverk UR105M Iron Knight on our website, watchyouwant.com.